Hello, welcome to Intest Thermal Solutions. My name is Tom, and today I'm here to show you how to use the ThermoStream's cycle screen so that you can automate cycling through a number of set points or temperatures. So you're looking at the operator screen, and on the operator screen, the ThermoStream does offer a limited version of cycling. Uh, but you only have these three set points you can use, the hot, ambient, and cold, and you have to cycle through them in that order, hot, ambient, and cold. For more complex test setups, we recommend you use the cycle screen. In the cycle screen, you are able to set up up to 18 unique set points, and you can cycle through those 18 set points up to 99 times. Uh, here it's only set to cycle through three times, but uh, you get 18 set points and you can cycle through them 99 times. So while that is limited, it's far better than what the operator screen offers you. It is worth mentioning that for those who are going to control the thermal stream with remote communications, the, the programs you send remotely have an unlimited number of set points and an unlimited number of cycles. But for this tutorial, I'm going to focus on the touch screen and what's available to you locally. So I'll start by giving you an explanation of what you're seeing here on the cycle screen. Uh, over on the right hand side, this is the cycling table. This is where the 18 set points can be configured. The set point, that's the temperature we're going to drive to. And each set point has uh, a ramp, soak, and window parameter that are accompany it. Uh, the ramp is the rate in degrees C per minute that the system will transition to the temperature. Uh, a setting of 999 is the fastest possible. A setting of zero means that the machine will effectively skip that set point. Uh, the soak is the duration in seconds that the machine will stay or, or dwell at the temperature once it, once it reaches it. And the window is the range uh, in degrees at which the set point is considered at temperature. For example, we have a set point of 25 with a window of 1, so that means that any temperature from 24 to 26 degrees is considered at temperature. Now you notice that set point 1 is white and the rest of them are gray. That's because the rest of them are disabled. If we use the arrow keys, these will help us move through each of the set points. And over here you can see that set point 4 is disabled. By cl clicking that, I will enable it. I'll move up and I'll enable a couple of others as well. And at the bottom here, there's this is where you can change the parameters for each set point. Uh, I'm on set point 2. It has a temperature of 10. If I touch this, I can change it to 25 and hit OK. And you can see that that change is reflected in the table. Over on the left-hand side, we have two graphs. Uh, this topmost graph is a profile of what our cycle setup will be. Um, it shows us what the set points are. And you'll see if I go down here and I turn on a few more, you'll, you'll see that the, that graph changes to reflect the active set points. Uh, one of the nice features about this is down at the bottom, it tells you just how long it will take to go through each set point. The bottom, this is an active real-time graph. Uh, because we don't have the machine running currently, we have a flat line at 25 degrees. It's a flat line that's showing the current status of the machine. But when this starts to cycle, uh, this will become more dynamic. The set point line will be displayed in green and the air temperature will be displayed in red. And if we were using DUT control, the, the extra sensor or the DUT sensor would also be reflected in this graph. Along the right here, uh, these buttons are used to control what you see in this graph. Currently we have the, the, the high set to 160 and we have the low point of the graph set to 20. And uh, we could change these, for example, if I wanted to set the high to 200, hit OK. I could set the low to minus 50 and hit OK. And you can see the graph changes to reflect those parameters. 
Uh, the auto scale button can be clicked and it will show you a, a better detail of exactly what's going on right now. So uh, by hitting auto scale right there, it's zoomed us right in between 24 and 26 and given us a much finer view of the, the, the temperature activity. Up at the top, we have the cycle button. This is where you set the number of times that the machine will cycle through the active set points. Uh, we're currently set to cycle three times, but by clicking this, we could change it to up to 99. Uh, 99 cycles is the, the maximum number that's available here. Uh, I have not discussed the flow on or the run to button. I'll talk about those in a little bit. Uh, those are used to for more manual control when you're in the cycle screen. Like I said, I'll get to those in a little bit. So at this point, I'm gonna set up uh, some temperatures and some parameters. That'll take me a couple minutes. I'll, I'll pause and come back after I do that. And then I'll cycle the machine and you can watch some of what it does when it's cycling. So I'm back, I have set up the cycling table, you can say I have a number of temperatures with their parameters. Uh, that does take a couple minutes of your time to do. So the first thing you should probably do is go to your setup screen here and save your setup. Um, you have a couple options. If the setup already has a name, you can hit save setup and overwrite the setup. For example, this is test setup. I hit OK. It has just saved it as the test setup. Or you could change the setup name with this dialog box. And, uh, for example, I'll call this tutorial. And I'll hit OK. That's changed the name, and I still have to hit Save Setup now to save the tutorial setup. So once I've named and saved my setup file, I'll go back to the cycle screen. And now I'm going to press the Start Cycling button, and the machine will automatically cycle through these set points. So you can probably hear the thermo stream, the air has started flowing out of the main nozzle and the nozzle has lowered and we can watch our progress right up here on the status bar. Uh, we already drove to temperature one, we're now at temperature two. Uh, one thing worth noting is I, I did put a ramp rate of 200 on temp temperature three instead of a 999, the fastest possible. If you look over on your graph here that shows our cycling profile, the 999 numbers are directly vertical. They're as fast as possible. The 200, you can see a more gradual um, transition here. And you'll also notice on the bottom graph, our real-time graph has started to show some of the activity that's going on. Uh, also worth noting, we have this set up for two cycles. Uh, for people who have many cycles, maybe you have 50 or 80, and you want to know at what cycle you're at, up here in the status bar, it shows us we're at cycle one of two. A couple more things you can do while the machine is cycling. If you wanted to pause it, you could press this button. Uh, the, the screen goes yellow up here and it tells you cycling is paused. By clicking, you could resume. And at any point, you can click the stop cycling button and the thermo stream will stop the airflow and the head will raise and the cycling will stop for you. Um, so I'm going to stop the cycling now, and then I'll talk a little bit about the Run To button. So the last thing I want to talk to you about in this cycle screen is a little more of the manual control aspect, um, specifically the Run To button. If you want to manually select one of these set points and drive the machine to it, you could use the arrow key and simply click the Run To set point 3, for example. By pressing that, the thermal stream nozzle has lowered and we are now driving to just that set point. You can see it here in the status bar. And once it reaches that set point, the machine will just sit and dwell there infinitely. Uh, it will run through the soak time. And once the soak time is over, it will just stay at temperature. So this is one way to give you a little more manual flexibility. If you wanna load in a number of temperatures that you may use at some point, but you want to use them randomly and when you see fit, not in an order or under any specific time constraints. So I'll stop that. And that's about all I have for the cycle screen for today. I hope this tutorial has been helpful for you and thank you for watching.